Look at this little alien speeder bike. Hey there, just a quick heads up. My book, The Long Way Home, is now for sale at doozerbook.com. It's about my very first adventure from Honduras to Boulder. You know how to make a peanut butter Nutella wrap deluxe? You throw a banana in there. And now, it's a French crepe. Is there any point to trying to fix bedhead when you're on a bike tour? I mean, all you're gonna do is wear a helmet, right? And you're not trying to impress anybody, so I'm gonna go like this. That's all good, right? <laughs> all right, thank you, Cozy Bed, which was actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. All right, buddy, let's go. Onward. Oh, that sun is coming up. It's 6.30, my earliest start. And I'm feeling good, Saturday morning. And today I'm sending out a whole bunch of love and support to Amelia, who is running a 100 kilometer race. She's gonna do great, cause she's amazing. So I'll be thinking about her today, sending her some, sending her love. Here we go, no crashies, no flatties, no whammies. Off to Slab City. I've been excited about Slab City for a while and all the art that I'm about to see. It's really one of the main reasons why I picked this route because I've always wanted to go here. So there's a lot of different art, at least from what I've seen online. But the most well-known one is Salvation Mountain, and it's right here. So I've been warned that the people here are a little ornery, and I was walking up and he's like, it's closed. Okay, all right, can I ask you when it opens? And he's like, it's, it's closed. Not the friendliest of welcomes, but I kind of expected that. <laughs> you know, these desert artist people are, uh, they're interesting to say the least. Slab City, the last free place, unless you show up before 8 a.m. <laughs> oh, this is fascinating. It looks like a post-apocalyptic your movie set. I love art like this. Mainly because it just, it makes me smile. It makes me laugh. It's just goofy, <laughs> you know? It definitely takes skill and talent to put something like this together, even though it looks just like a bunch of junk stuck to a truck, but there's more to it than that. And I appreciate the effort. I guess this place doesn't get going till later in the day. And I feel a little bit weird walking around right now after my not so warm welcome, welcome at Salvation Mountain. I feel like everybody here is looking at me weird. 
this reminds me a little bit of a permanent Burning Man where there's all these different camps and everybody has their own theme and <laughs> they're, they're all uh, fascinating, interesting, wacky, wild. So here I am riding along, wondering what I'm doing here. Nobody's around. And then this very happy, smiley face comes out. It's Dr. Spencer. How you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day. We got a little wind, but the sun is shining. It sure is. We're in Slab City, and we get 350 days of sunshine here. And I have a degree in solar en engineering, and I have put together a solar system that I'll be showing Ryan shortly, and uh, you guys also. And great. you'll so be amazing. What do you do here? Well, I plant uh, right over here. If you'll take a, a gander over here, you guys, I have over 6,000 plants they're botanic it's a botanical gardens i've got uh, seven different types of spinaches five different types of kales i've got bamboo from all over the world from burma from thailand from vietnam i grow all most all of my vegetables that i eat right here and last summer i put in a swimming pool <laughs> i've got a solar oven that the solar oven is big enough to cook 12 large pizzas at the same time <laughs> and we have an amazing dinners here that's amazing and so you said this is a church it's a church of enlightenment and ba basically it's a place to come to raise consciousness because if we don't raise a planetary consciousness oh we may succumb to some of the foolery that uh, is happening that we all recognize here absolutely this is your swimming pool yes it is and i and in the summertime i will go in that uh four or five sometimes six times a day yeah when, I bet. when it's 120 and this next year i got the the new earbuds and i'm listening to james Mishner's uh, great books on uh, you know read to me and i'll be sitting here in one of the lo floating lounge chairs <laughs> listening to the greatest greatest literature everywhere i might listen to shakespeare i might listen to goethe then i have my solar system here i've got the brand new are you familiar with EcoFlow? Oh yeah. Oh man, that's that. great. So Is this powers that? your whole world. Yeah. Yes, I run four freezers, two refrigerators, uh, uh, air conditioning, all my pumps uh, there, and all my power tools. So I'm I'm quite nicely set up yeah absolutely and these are all the batteries that store the energy yes and this is two systems i have one i have a 4000 watt uh, system that runs the back two trailers so this is my flying machine ryan that thing flies well it will <laughs> and it will duplicate what a dragonfly does and okay. the dragonfly is the most maneuverable creature in the universe that we have found they outperform a hummingbird and uh, that'll have that'll have two wings on each side like a dragonfly yeah. and it, those wings will flap at 20 times per second the greatest advancement in human mobility it'll succeed exceed the automobile the airplane and all that because it'll be a vertical lift and then you'll be able to take off and it's an ultralight and do you know what the definition of an ultralight is no with the conditions to be an ultralight no what things it can't weigh the the machine itself can't weigh over 254 pounds okay it can't uh, carry more than five gallons of fuel but that's all battery operated wow okay so we eliminate that and it's not to exceed 65 miles an hour but who's going to who's going to stop you in <laughs> 74 the air and, police oh, the air police so okay. what is the story of slab city that this was Dunlap military base. Okay. And in 1940, I'll give you the short. Version. Okay, yeah. 1947, they closed about half the bases in the country after mm -hmm. World War II. And uh, when they closed this base, uh, General pa Patton had been out here teaching artillery. And so when they closed the base, they had these all, all, uh, artillery shells. And the commanding general said to the asked the Defense Department, what do we do with these unexploded shells? And they says, dig a 20-foot hole and bury it, huh. and don't tell anybody where it is, so we may be standing on it right now. <laughs> so that is one of the reasons, among others, why this area has not ever been developed. Okay. So there's no rent, no mortgage, no property taxes, and no building uh, restrictions here. Okay. As you can see from the Tower of Enlightenment over here, <laughs> right here you can see from the tower of enlightenment oh yeah there i have built that not one 
uh, permit or uh, building inspectors ever come to stop <laughs> me from doing that. So my creative I energies can be expressed here yeah. without all the government regulations. Yeah. And, you know. and so everybody who lives here is off the grid completely solar powered in some way. Yes, and that's another reason why it's not being developed because it would cost too much to bring in sewage, yeah. uh, you know, and water and uh, electricity out here. Yeah. And how many people live out here? In the summertime, it's 200, 250. In the wintertime, it goes up to 4,000. Oh, wow. Because so many snowbirds come out here because yeah. there's no rent, no, no, and it's uh, quite free to be out here. Yeah, I bet it is. How long have you been here? Uh, seven years. Seven years, right yeah. on. Oh, yeah, I love this. This is really nice. Isn't it nice? And we, we put all this together from just a, a scrap wood that was rotting out at the old riverbed out here. And I went out and gathered this all up. And we tried to get pieces that that had the right angle and that to uh, to make it such a, as as the hobbits would build. So what is this uh, angel? This is the angel of man's better nature and she's and she always turns to face the way the sun is as a reminder to us to always face our problems head on. Don't be the coward that dies a thousand deaths. Be the warrior that faces it and uh, never fears his own death. This is a hernal, and people say, a hernal? What's a hernal? I said, it's a urinal for both boys and girls. And girls can pee frontwards or backwards. And us boys, we pee frontwards, but don't pee on the yellow because some of the girls sit on that. <laughs> so that way they don't have to go trampling in my trailer. It's a hernal. It's a hernal. And if somebody wants to market this, because if you can imagine... Uh, uh, seeing a stadium of people there and you see you see uh, on the women's uh, line for the bathroom you see them 200 uh, yeah. waiting 200 a uh, line 200 people long that's because they're waiting for a six-foot stall yeah. to go in yeah. I said and us guys we go shoulder to shoulder and just pee pee in a trough <laughs> I said if we put these shoulder to shoulder in the women's they could pee as quickly as as guys do the hernal and then it's composting or it goes it goes right here and because we're in the desert uh it it, it uh, percolates uh without any smell you smell anything now nope i sure well, don't we've had a thousand people pee in that <laughs> this book is a goldilocks mission it's available on amazon and uh this book is about our next migration to a a earth-like planet and we now have discovered millions of planets out there mm. and we're going to find one that has conditions far better than Mars. Huh? Although Mars is our really our, our next step. When did you write this? I wrote this in 2009. Right on. And, uh, and uh, so it goes in here and tells a whole story about the skydets that uh, travel <laughs> travel on three ships and you can see the three ships here oh, yeah. and I have figured out how to go multiple times faster than the speed of light so we're gonna need that because the distances that we're traveling to other star systems is just incredible yeah it's far so we have to we have to overcome that and and I'm sh I know the the power of the universe is there block uh, is not going to stop us from going going throughout the universe at speeds uh, warp speeds. Every year, twice a year, I've, uh, uh, I sponsor the Slab City Olympics and I'm one of the oldest pole vaulters in the world and I have a Olympic javelin here and we throw the javelin and you can see this is the shot put, it's a four kilo shot put. We have the discus, uh, we do that, we run the 50 meter dash, the 100 meter <laughs> dash and uh, that's to get the kids out here into physical health in that and try to keep them off the drugs that are going there. So yeah. this is a non-drug uh, um, encampment yeah. and no cigarette smoking, nothing nothing that's damaging to the body that we do here because this body's a temple to raise our consciousness. Let's go up here. Go to the tower. We're going up the tower. You be very careful. I will be. to the tippy top. And what I, you didn't see is, uh, I've been up here for about an hour and a half helping him put up this new sign. He gave me a saw and a drill and just, just went to work. He totally trusted me. And now there's a new sign 
on the top of the Tower of Enlightenment and I got to put my mark here and uh, feels good to do a little bit of carpentry. I'm a total, total beginner, but it was fun. So Dr. Spencer, what are we doing here today? We are fixing the American flagpole, which represents the finest document that was ever written and it's called the Constitution of the United States. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're definitely in the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> but isn't that about the nicest uh, wording that you could ever think of uh, in doing that? So we're gonna put up the flag. Put up the flag. We did it! Right on, we got it up there. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag. Amen. Cheers, my friend. Cheers to you. To the peanut butter and jellies. Yeah, good, good, good. This is a awesome moment in life here. I had no idea that I'd be hanging out in Slab City this long. I had no idea I was gonna meet Dr. Spencer and Michael and eating peanut butter and jellies and enjoying life. Mm-mm. All right, my new friend Michael's gonna take me to East Jesus. What's that all about? It's an art community in a very strange place. You're gonna like it. All right, I'm excited. And just so you know, I got to uh, Dr. Spencer's at seven in the morning. It is now one in the afternoon. I don't know if I'm going very far today, but that's all right, because I'm right here right now and I'm loving it. Hey guys. Hope you're friendly. Yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> so this is East Jesus? East Jesus. All right. And Michael stays here from time to time. He lives near LA, but this is... Why do you like coming here actually? Because it's some place you'll never see any place else and you either like it or you don't. You either get it or you don't. And the people here are wonderful and we have a great time. Hello. Like this, the Galactic Please Patrol. These are quite the art cars. Dolphin farts are more toxic than car exhaust, cigarette smoke, and coal fire powered plants. <laughs> why, why so much hate against dolphins? They're like the most beloved animal. <laughs> You could spend hours, days in this entire city checking out everything. There's so many little intricacies everywhere and most things just put a smile on your face or make you think about something differently and make you appreciate the beauty that artists put into all of their creations and uh, yeah, it's all good. 
like this. <laughs> Look at this, all this broken glass and an old piano with a typewriter. Because why not? What I like is that a place like this is giving life to what a lot of people would consider junk, right? But out here, it's not junk, it's art and it's fun to look at. And it makes you realize that maybe some of the things that we just throw away willy nilly, we could turn into some pretty cool art. Look at this little alien speeder bike. Yeah, kind of feel like I'm in Star Wars out here. Star Wars Cantina, full of aliens. So one of the guys in there just said that they've been doing this for over 12 years now and over 2000 artists have all collaborated. They stay for months at a time to put this together. Thank you, people of East Jesus. That was awesome. And right next to East Jesus is Dot's place. Dot, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you today? Doing great. Yeah. Um, what's the story with your installation? Well, just like a lot of other people, the desert inspired me to create artwork. And I've made kind of like an art camp. We call it Amazing Art. Oh, just kind of, <laughs> when you travel around and you look through it, you'll see how it's a bunch of trailers kind of mishmashed around each other looping on each other and each one has installation work inside of them like this one that you're going to explore called the skeletrarium that starts with my uh, mummified mermaid and then moves into all sorts of bones and weird whatnots and things that i've collected out here yeah. and then some of the other trailers have like books in them or the taxidermy yeah. zoner party so pretty popular one too why yeah. do you think this area in specific is, inspires artists I, the desert air yeah. it's got to be the desert air yeah. and just like the freedom the the vast expanse yeah. of you know being able to see so far and i don't know it's just inspiring yeah yeah and you're always adding to it i'm guessing oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've been it's here four years over. and i'll just keep adding and keep adding and keep adding until i'm completely bored with it <laughs> very yep. cool all right this feels like, you know, when you're a kid and you build forts in your living room and you have blankets and cardboard boxes and you just create your own fantasy land. That's essentially what Dot has created here. I love it. <laughs> little vanity to do your uh, makeup. Oh, looks like she has a library for sure. Look at that. Man, that's a lot of books in here. A whole trailer full of books. And this obviously is the living room. Wow, look at this. It's like a nice cozy bed right there. Yeah, it is like a maze in here. You can just keep on cruising around, seeing everything. The taxidermy dinner party. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> This is kind of hilarious. And here is the Mermaid Cove. Oh wow, there's actually a, a pool right there. I bet that's awesome in the summertime. Got a little island vibe in here. You know, I've just been smiling all day, which is a good feeling. Smiling and laughing and just in awe of what humans can create. You know, a lot of people would think, though, this is just like weird, but I don't think it's weird. I think it's very cool. And I like when adults express themselves in ways that society might seem, think are childish, you know, like this isn't real art, it's goofy, it's blah, 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 you know, but I love this. I love adults tapping into their childlike spirit. How long have you been creating art? I mean, I've probably been creating art my entire life. Okay. I was always one of those kids who would go to a thrift store or, or even find something in the neighbor's garbage and turn it into something more interesting. I always okay. loved, um, you know, old junk shops and things like that, people's yeah. garages, anywhere that you've got a stockpile of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then my brain just starts going. But yeah. um, I did computers for about 20 years 
And then when I retired from that, I decided that I just was gonna travel. So I was doing like everybody else, traveling around. And then when I got here, it was like, I think I wanna make something for other people to come see. Yeah. So. How much longer do you think you'll stay here? Oh gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> Every day could be the day that I leave. <laughs> yep. But not yet. Yeah. Maybe a little more time. I got right. a few more things I wanna do here. Yeah. So. Right it's not quite finished yet. Sometimes you wake up with plans, and then sometimes those plans change, especially when you're on an adventure. I came here in the morning thinking I'd spend a couple hours, check out some art, and continue on about 65-ish miles, but then I met Dr. Spencer, fascinating human, loving human, kind human, my kind of human, and uh, he's like, just stay here. And the itchy part of me was like, oh, I gotta keep going, I'm on a tight schedule, I gotta make the miles. And it took a while to be like, you know what? I'm okay with it now. Like, this is what life is all about. This is what being the boss of me is all about. I can take a day off and explore a fascinating place and connect with a wonderful human. And that's uh, what I've done. And so I'm gonna stay here in this little RV back here. And I'll get up tomorrow and ride hard. How's that sound? And I would have had like a 20 mile an hour headwind all day, so it would have been a miserable day of riding that way, when instead I've been hanging out here, having the time of my life. My heart is happy. This is why I travel. This is the exact reason why I travel, to connect with amazing humans. And uh, I'm really happy to have met Dr. Spencer. Life is good.